Hello, good evening, thank you for joining us on The Late Show. We've got so much to show you tonight and share with you. Gordon and myself, Boo, the host for the evening, and I want you to know that we have a very special guest that we'll be bringing on. He's born in Bethlehem. He was a former terrorist and a Muslim, brought up as a Muslim, until he read the Bible, entire Bible. But Gordon, you're going to start us off because you've almost finished writing a book, right? Finished it last night. Did you? It went off last night to the uh, typesetter yeah. and uh, he'll have it done by the end of next week. It's uh, got maps, it's got pictures in it. I, I listened to so many good programmes on Revelation TV uh, over the last six months since October the 7th to do with Israel, to do with what happened at Hamas and I began to be aware that people were phoning the office and saying, look, we're hearing things. We don't know what to say to our neighbours. We don't know what to say to our family and friends. And uh, what can we, you know, can you help us give us some scriptures? Uh, and so I thought, well, I'll put together a pamphlet. And then I had more material than a pamphlet. So I thought, well, I'll make a 16 page uh, booklet. Uh, and I got more material. I've ended up with something over 200 pages. Uh, eight pages of uh, photographs, um, eight pages of maps to show the different uh, situations. And, and it covers everything from why did the attack take place, what's truth, what is not truth, uh, how have we been able to verify it. Um, and and this, this is just one of the, the, the maps that is in it. Um, if you look at the beginning of Genesis, I mean, we know the, the little situation of, of Israel today. Um, if you go into the Bible and you read Genesis 15 at 18, it says, To your set descendants I've given this land from a river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kezazites, the Kadamites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Riphram, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. And Going on into other verses in Joshua, Deuteronomy, uh, lots of scriptures which talk about the land and, and looking at what God says is the land that the, the Jews should have. And, and I think it's, it's not for us to say how they're going to get it. It's not certainly for the Israelites, the Jews, to go and fight to get it. But God has put it in his scriptures and what God puts in his scriptures, we believe in. Yeah. Now, Leslie was proofreading your book yep. and she was telling me, you've got to read this, Howard. There are so many good things in it. And what and the charter of Hamas is yep. there as well. We'll get into that in a little bit later. But we want to go to tonight's special guest uh, that it's uh, video um, and it's we're doing it in segments. So we'll be coming back to picture. Uh, but I want you to start uh, really uh, having a listen to what Wally Schubert had to say. It's as if. It was written or recorded for today, but it as actually was recorded in 2007. To say Islam is, is, is evil, bad religion, or not peaceful religion, or whatever, this is not my job. My job is to only say the Islam that I grew up with as a child, the Islam I grew up with in high school, the Islam that, that is being propagated throughout the Middle East. It is extremely anti-Semitic. Um, to put it in a nutshell, for the Western viewers, they can relate to Nazism, seeing footage of the Holocaust. Uh, in the same fashion, uh, the system robbed everything. The, the arts were robbed, just as Hitler robbed the arts. The school system was robbed, just like Hitler robbed the school system. The youth was robbed, just like the Boy Scouts, uh, the music, the arts. Everything was being robbed from us, where we got nothing, we, we heard nothing except Jew hatred. And then you have graffiti outside when you go out. As a child, you go out the house, outside the house and you see graffiti all over the country. Everywhere is graffiti. And what kind of graffiti? We knock on the gates of heaven with the skulls of Jews, basically, to kill Jews. To die as a martyr was the way to live, to survive. And f right from kindergarten, yeah, I remember our first song in kindergarten, it was called Arabs are beloved and Jews are dogs. This is something you, unimaginable in the West. But even if you go to your father and ask him to explain things to you, he supports the religious education, he supports the, uh, the school system, and socially everything is supports that system. There's only one party line or the coffin in that system. So that's how I grew up with basically. My mother who was an American, she uh, happened to uh, move there and she wanted nothing to do with Islamism. She wanted to leave back. She went for a visit and she was captured, kind of uh, not allowed to leave. And she ended up there for almost 40 years against her will as an American. 
Uh, so that's why I always tell girls who are interested in marriage with somebody out of their faith, if you're a Christian girl, you know, watch out. Uh, talk to my mother. She can tell you the stories. At every place I speak, women come out and tell me about their problems marrying out of the faith, especially marrying a Muslim. Because in Islam, your children becomes automatically Muslim. Your daughter has to marry a Muslim male. And if she doesn't marry a Muslim, if my sister married a non-Muslim, it was my duty to kill her. And I would have thought nothing of it. But this is amazing. I mean, you're a Palestinian, right? Yes, am, I hearing, am I hearing straight? Yes. Okay. And yet you grew up with all of that, um, the education system that you say it robbed you because you know something different. Uh, can I say truth? Yes. Oh, thank you. Truth. From that which was uh, part of the, how can I say, the, the propaganda? Yes. Oh. Thank you. Uh, now that, uh, not to be trite about it, is what has helped to fuel um, the, the terrorism that we've, we see daily on our television now. Yes. On the radical Muslim terrorist. Yes. Now, how do we, how, how come you changed? Can, it, does that give us hope that there are other people out there that can also we have We should always change? have hope, Howard. There's always hope. When you, when you have an avenue to see the truth, like what you have in your show, like what you're providing. People can see the truth. People can taste what Christianity is about, what the Bible is about, an avenue. When I started reading the Bible in 1993, I was trying to convert my Catholic wife to Islam as my father converted my mother to Islam. And uh, I told her, she said to me, well, why should I leave my traditional faith? Uh, I said to her, well, because the Jewish people, they corrupted the Bible. They're prophet killers. And she said, well, well, can you show me? You know, what do you mean? Can you show me the evidence? Can you show me some, some verses that are corrupted and, and things of that sort? So I said, well, that's a dilemma here. This, this lady is asking for evidence. Oops. So I had to go to the store and buy a $10 Bible, King James. And I read it from cover to cover. And before I started reading it, you know, and I had the Quran side by side with the Bible. And I, I did a prayer, you know. And I thought God is going to show me the, the problems in the Bible. And I said, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, please lead me to the truth. And I was really sincere about it. Please lead me to the truth. And I urge anybody who's viewing this to do the same prayer. Just ask the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to lead you to the truth. And guess what? He will do it. He made that promise. And I, I thought at first glance on the Quran, I could find the problems with the Bible and looking at the Bible, I find the corruptions. And I started from Genesis and I started learning about the fall of man in Genesis. I, underst I understood the necessity for redemption, for Christ. which is the element that was missing in, in Islam. In Islam, uh, the, the Quran stated that God created us to test us. God to, to test human, humanity so that we will be tested. And yet in the Bible here, God created us perfect beings. Adam and Eve were, were perfect in the garden, yet they chose different avenue which caused them to sin, which was taken from the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now they know evil. And that's how sin entered into man. And from that moment on, I started going on, you know, Exodus, everything down to the prophets. And when I got to the prophets, I was shocked. That was around 1993. And tormenting my mother as a young teenager, uh, asking her, because I caught her one time looking at the Bible. And she said, I'm just looking at this as curiosity, you know. She didn't confess to me that she was a Christian. She reverted from Islam because the punishment in Islam, if you, whoever leaves his faith, kill him. That's what the Hadith Hadrid. says. Hadrid. Yes, there's a problem for my mother. She had to live a silent life. And then she said, yes, I said, I, said, I just want to know if there will be a Palestinian state according to the Bible. And she said, yes, there will be a Palestinian state. Because in Joel chapter 3, it talks about the division of the land of Israel. She didn't say anything else. She didn't tell me it was going to be judgment. Mm. So I read that part. It says that God will come down, judge the nations for what they have did to Israel. Oh. For they have this scattered a shock at this time. Huh? Was this a shock for you? Extremely shock for what is scattered my people and divided my land, you know. Mm. And not only that, I was shocked with thousands of verses. I mean, literally thousands. The Bible has eight thousand three hundred and fifty-two verses of prophetic nature. I ran into Psalm eighty-three, Amos nine, and in Amos nine verse fifteen. It says, "I will put them in their land 
and no longer shall they be pulled out of that land. Wow. And indeed, we tried. I lived the Six Days War. I remember the Six Days War. It was a parallel to Joshua. Joshua had a Six Days War when he established the state of Israel the first time. So I begin to learn that that state of Israel was a, was a godly commandment, godly requirement. He ordained it. But I couldn't believe that how could God ordain an evil state like Israel? Because in my view, Israel was an evil state. It was an apartheid. It was an occupation, you see. And, and that's then, what is fed out in the media. That's what so many people in this country believe. Yes. Or even in the West, and that's even what I Christians. Believe, that's what I believed as well. Until I started to divorce my uh, uh, prejudiced uh, loyalties, you know, the traditional loyalties that's, that's, that's so strong. Uh, let's ask a question. If, if you know, in, in Germany, during the Nazi time, how many Germans were against the Jews? And was it an issue of occupation? Was it an issue of apartheid? Mm -hmm. What was the issue? What caused the Holocaust? Is it, is it an issue of truth? If it was an issue of truth, or, or is it an issue of education? The, not, the, the, the Germans were one of the most educated people on earth. Good point. So why would over 90% of Germans support Adolf Hitler and support the Holocaust if it's an issue of education? It is not an issue of education. It is an issue of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. It's an issue of evil, of hatred towards this minority group called the Jews. Who are God's chosen people. That's right. And they ended up finding in the Bible why God chose these people, that the Messiah will come from them. You know, and then I ran into Psalm 83, which is an astonishing psalm. And people think this, it says on the title, the Song of Asaf. I say, wow, this is not a song at all. And it says, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. They form a confederacy against you. Wow, a confederacy of nations against Israel? And it names them by name, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Right. Edom has been Jordan, the Ishmaelites right. has been the Arabs, the Hajarites as well. And it mentions Assyria came to the aid of Edom, and Assyria has Iraq and Syria. In, and, it, and it talks about this battle that Israel will be victorious. And I bet you anything, when David was writing these words, he, he was probably it. shocked. Yeah. Whenever Assyria attacked Israel, or Babylonia attacked Israel, or Rome attacked Israel, Israel is doomed. Oh. Here is a confederacy of nations mm -hmm. coming against Israel, and Israel is triumphant. And it says in verse 16, fill their faces with shame regarding the enemies, that they may seek your name, O Lord. And I had to stumble at that verse, they, seek, they, they may seek your name, who, you know, who is the Lord. The, and it, it mentions it there in one of just about three places in, in the King James Version of the name Jehovah, funnily enough, in Psalm 83, 18. That's right. You know, that you, Jehovah, who's yeah. alone, you know. Is the most high. Is the most, yeah, over yeah. all the earth. And yeah. it's amazing. And then it talks about how the battle will be won. It says, pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with your storm. And so when do you think that was prophetically fulfilled? 1967? No, no, 67, that's only one fulfillment is going to continue on and on and on until the nations know and they're all that drawn Israel's in. God is the true God. Amen. You see? Zechariah. And Zechariah, the same thing. Yeah. Zechariah 12 and 14. And what amazed me about Zechariah is he talked about the women being raped in Jerusalem. Now, here I was in high school and my teacher, Naim Ayyad, the uh, Islamic teacher, uh, talking to us about what would be the outcome after we defeated the Jews. Because in our Islamic theology that we learn, in the Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad says that the day of judgment shall not come to pass until the tribes of Islam defeat the tribes of Israel in Jerusalem and in the surrounding nations. And the trees and the stones will cry out, there is a Jew hiding behind me. Come, O Muslim, come, O slave of Allah, come and kill him. So we ask, what happens to these? We, you know, who do we kill? He said, we kill the man, we take the woman as concubine. And we asked about what do you mean by concubine? You know, you can have children with concubines, I learned from the teacher. And then I said, well, how could you have children if you're not married to them? Is it out of wedlock? He goes, no, it's not out of wedlock, and it's not I marriage. Too. I said, but it is marriage, but it's not marriage. I'm confused here. Teacher, is it consensual? And he says, it doesn't have to be. And I said, but teacher, is that rape? And he says, no, it's not. And there in Zechariah, it talks about the women in Jerusalem being ravished by the enemies that comes round about Israel. And it says the nations round about. If you want to know what happens, just look up the nations round about or the neighbors of Israel. So I started looking at the situation and examining the life I lived.
putting a bomb in the bank, trying to kill my first Jew, my cousin being a bomb maker, my other cousin dying on his way to plant a bomb in Ben Yehuda Street. And I started looking at these facts, of what had happened, and I started realizing it's not an issue of land, it's not an issue of refugee problem, because the Jewish people have been the world's greatest refugee problem. There is the spirit no anti-Semitic. Exactly. It's the same spirit as Adolf Hitler. Because Umar ibn al-Khattab, the Khalif of Islam, declared that a Jew must wear a yellow patch on his shoulder, exactly as was in Nazi Germany. A Jew must pay jizya or taxation, exactly as in Nazi Germany. A Jew must walk the alleyway, must not walk the main roads, exactly as in Nazi Germany. A Jew must live secluded, exactly as in ghettos in Nazi Germany. And then I started reading Matthew 25 and understanding I was naked and you didn't give me clothes. I was hungry, you didn't feed me. And there was no excuse for nobody during the 2000 years of the diaspora not to have helped this refugee problem called the Jew. That's None of us. You should actually even turn it around, the refugee problem called the Jew, rather than the refugee situation being right. the Palestinians. I love my history and that interview you just watched it there, 2007. In 2005, Ariel Sharon was the Prime Minister of Israel and he decided to pull the Jewish settlements out of Gaza. 2006, there was elections, the last time there was elections in Gaza and Hamas, they won by a big majority. It said they won perhaps because there was so much corruption by the other parties. 2007, which is when that interview took place, there was a unity government of Hamas and the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, but they couldn't get on together. And there was infighting and Palestinian, Palestinian was killing Palestinian. And uh, there was even suggestions that the Hamas were throwing the other uh, Palestinians off the roofs of the buildings and killing them. 2007 is when this interview took place. Hamas is still there, but have a listen to some more of what Walid had to share. Listening to Walid Shu about who is a Palestinian, and as he just this minute said, you were involved in terrorist acts, is yes, that right? Sir. Against Israel? Yes, sir. How are your people dealing with this now? I mean, this is like going back on them. Yes, sir. And that's what I'm saying, you know. What about my freedom? What about your freedom? What about our freedom to express our views? Even if our views are wrong or stupid or incorrect or inaccurate, don't we have at least the right to express our views? You know, what happened right with my family, you know, my father said, you should be killed. My brother called and threatened my wife. And she was shocked, she was shocked. She couldn't, she couldn't understand it. How could a person that came to our house ate from the same table and we were friends and all of a sudden calls her up and he says, we know where you're living. We know what you're doing against Islam. Just as a threat that would come from any Islamist group. And we started feeling the persecution and my, my land was taken away from me in Israel. And my family said, if you want your land back, you have to come back to Bethlehem court mm -hmm. and declare the shaharatan, which means come back to Islam. So I have no freedom of religion. Now I ask them, I say, family, please tell me, who's the land thief? Who steals the lands? You blame the Jews for stealing lands, yet you steal my little land that I have. I have just a small little lot. Yet, it's amazing because Yasser Arafat's uncle sold land to the Jews. Uh, Hajj Amin Hussein's father sold land to the Jews. Hajj Amin Hussein. Oh, recently? Or? No. Obviously in the last you know, To the, the years. Jewish National Fund. You know, uh, the mayors of Jerusalem sold land to the Jews. The most prominent Arab leaders sold land to the Jews. Which was forbidden. That's right. It was forbidden, but yet it was forbidden for others, but not for them. You see, my grandfather almost died because he sold land to the Jews. Well, there are Christians um, that I know in this country that uh, would be shocked by listening to what you're saying because their hearts are all right for justice. And they think that what's happened in, to the Palestinians is that Israel is an aggressor. I mean, that's what it comes across all the time, that they've gone in and occupied. And it seems to me that how can we um, deal with that uh, when Christians don't understand the role of Israel? If you would live in Nazi Germany and the media day in and day out bombarded you, that the Jews are evildoers, the Jews are all kinds of things, does it mean because everybody is reciting this, does it mean it's true? Like I always say, you know, Noah was right and the whole world drowned. 
Good so, point. So, you sound like my brother-in-law. He always used to say, just because the majority are in favor of it, it right. doesn't mean they're right. Majority doesn't mean truth. But that's the, what popular opinion is all about, and that's what seems to sway, and that's probably why the world's in a bit of a mess. It's because they miss the gaps of the pieces of facts that they, they, that they lose on. First of all, it was the Muslim, and, and Islamic and Arabic pogroms by Hajj Amin al-Husseini that forced 800,000 Jews to leave from Islamic countries and to be forced to go to Israel. They were forced to go to Israel, and then you had a holocaust from the West. So it was from the East, the West, and from the North, from Russia, the pogroms. So that's why I asked my Palestinian friends, I said, excuse me, who created the state of Israel? They say, well, the Balfour Declaration. I said, no, it wasn't the Balfour Declaration, it was our hatred. You're guilty, I'm guilty, we're all guilty. Just exactly as everybody's guilty of killing Jesus. We are all guilty about Israel. Every single nation in the world is guilty about Israel. We forced the Jews to create a state, and these people didn't come with machine guns or military armada. They came empty-handed. They bought land, started villages. It was desolate. I remember my grandmother telling me all these things. My village, our village in Beit Sahur, it was owned by six families only, and my grandmother told me that land was empty. There was nobody here. People came and divided the land illegally. There was no legal division. You know, here the Arabs were allowed to go under the Ottoman Empire. Okay? The Jews were not allowed to immigrate to Israel. A Christian and Muslim can immigrate, can go. The Jews were not allowed. They didn't have the freedom to go. Their, their, even their tombstones and their grave sites was taken to build a, a latrine for the Jordanian army. They were persecuted. All these years they were persecuted. They were persecuted in Hebron. In, in Hebron, the almost the entire Jewish population got massacred way before the so-called occupation. So why were they massacring Jews this whole time before the occupation? Why were they massacring Jews in Libya, in Iraq, in Egypt, in, in, in Tunisia, all over the Middle East, in Iran? It's a revelation to you. Why? Huh? Why, why, why would they be massacred? Yeah. Well, it's very simple. When I ran into this, this verse that says, Satan knew that his time is near, his very short time, he persecuted the woman, which brought the man child, the male child. Hello. It was obvious that the hatred was evil source that the world cannot comprehend right now. Mm. They need to probe into the scriptures to understand that evil. But you've just quoted Revelation 12. Yes, sir. Okay. A lot of Christians won't even go near that book because they think it's a book for fools. It's, a, it's, it's an amazing book. It gives you the guidelines. It gives you the, the outline of the different empires and nations that comes and the end time nation that come against. Look, this is a question I ask every person to look into the Bible. Look into the Bible. <clears throat> every nation, every, 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 every country that comes against Israel, in the end, the God stops and curses that comes against Israel, every single one of them mentioned, today is Muslim. Today is Muslim country. And this is a warning to our Muslim brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the names. Do we become fighters against God? Do we, we become fighters against, against God, yes. we actually think we're doing God a favor, the scripture says in the end, That's they'll right. think they're doing God a favor by getting rid of the Jews. The ones who come to kill you will be thinking they're doing God a favor. And that's what I was. I was thinking I was doing God a favor. In fact, if you look at Psalm 81, before you look at Psalm 83, it says that the haters of the Lord pretend submission to Him. Th th that's in reverse. Mm -hmm. The hater, how could you hate God and, and be submitter to God? Because you pretend. That's right, and the word Islam means submission. So there's these people that hate, you know, and but I is this, is this all? Believers in Islam, you be, in your absolutely opinion? not, absolutely not. There's many, many good, peace, God, peaceful yeah. Muslims. Thank God, and they suffer as well. You know, they suffer persecution because they don't adhere to this Islamist agenda. The Afghan community, the Iranian community, that here's. As a matter of fact, just today I was at, uh, with, 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 a, with a driver who was an Afghan. You know, and I was instantly started talking to him and, and, and probed him, and instantly he hates the fanatics. He can stand the fanatics. He wants to get rid of terrorism. He lives in England. He's glad to live in England. He's glad to live in the West. So it's not true. We need to vindicate the Muslims that have nothing to do with this. So let's be fair. Let's call truth truth. Well, you've been listening to Walid Shubat, who, as the strap said, is a former Muslim and a former.
terrorist. Terrorism is something that is awful. And Hamas, I've been looking at the uh, charter that they produce, lots, 36 points in all. Um, one of the points that Wallet was saying was about women. And it says about women, the Muslim role, woman has a role in the battle for liberation, for she is a factory of men. I wonder how many of those who go out chanting and uh, protesting about what Israel are doing uh, realise what they think of the role of women. They say lots of other things as well. They say the liberation of Palestine is a obligatory for every Muslim, no matter where they are. It is the one problem that needs to be resolved. And a bit further on, they say the Muslim must fight against the Jew and the Muslim must kill them until the last Jew, even if they're hiding behind a tree or a stone, the tree or the stone will shout out, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill me. How, how can there possibly be a two-state solution? Well, let's have a listen to a bit more of Walid and then we'll come back. I'm fascinated. I hope our viewers are too, because this is a very unusual interview. Waleed, you paint the picture, uh, as I say, just to reiterate for those who are just joining us again, that Palestinian, brought up a Palestinian, and parents there lived in Bethlehem, right? Yes, sir. You now have an understanding of the history of Israel, and it's the, just in your own words, what do you understand uh, with regards to the land issue, just alone, I mean, because a lot of people think that Israel should give up right at this moment in time, much more land. I'd like to know your thoughts on that. And also, did you recognize from scripture then that the Jews had the right to return? Or even if they probably were not even aware that this was prophesied, a lot of the Jews. That's right. And they're hit. Well, tell Every us Jewish person I've talked to doesn't understand, doesn't even comprehend what happened. And that's why even it says in, in Jeremiah, the day is coming, saith the Lord, that, 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 that the children of Israel will say that God who's brought the children of Israel, uh, uh, not just out of the land of Egypt, but God who's brought the children of Israel out of all the lands where he has driven them. And you talk about a hundred different nations. Moses would be dancing with joy. And he would say, look, I had such a rough time to get my people out of Egypt alone. God had to part the Red Sea. You're telling me that God brought them out of a hundred different countries? He probably wouldn't even believe it. But it's exactly what Jeremiah predicted. Do you see it as a miracle? Absolutely a miracle. It's an absolutely a miracle. God is the God of miracles. That's why in Isaiah, he stated his, his, his roadmap. He says, as you see things happen, as you see them fulfilled, you know that I am the Lord. So that's why in only the Christian faith has faith defined as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we have evidence. We have our roadmap and we have the world's roadmap. You've heard the term roadmap. Yeah, absolutely. The Bible has a roadmap. It says regarding division of Israel or giving, creating a Palestinian state or giving land, Israel giving land will be disastrous for Israel. This is what I always say. Because the issue is not an issue of land. The hatred was way before this issue, first of all. Second of all, if the Palestinians need to have a land, how do we deal with the education system that's been going on for 40 some years, filled with hatred, the school system, day in and day out, the radios, the TVs, the propaganda, the graffiti, the religious Islamic sermon, the Rekrima Sabris, who is the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, day in and day out preaching the killing and hatred of Jews, and every single Islamic clergy in the mosques preaching the killing of Jews day in and day out. How do we, how do we, you know, how but do surely we... Surely this would bring peace. The Palestinians would be so you, you satisfied the, and happy. That's if right. They, you give them, them fine. You give them more land. You bring the so-called refugee problem back. Then we have double amounts of Palestinians with the same amount of hatred, with the same amount of sermons. You know, Saturday people first, Sunday people next. Why do they say this? Why does Arafat lead what's called Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade? Al-Aqsa is a religious term depicting the, the temple of Jerusalem and Jerusalem. Mosque. This is not a war over land. This is a war over Al-Aqsa, even though the Muslims control Al-Aqsa Mosque. Why do they want to kill the Jews? You see, because it is in the eschatology. The Islamic eschatology teaches that when, when Jesus comes, the Islamic Jesus comes, he will break the cross. He will kill the false Jesus who comes out of Jerusalem, leading the Jews and the Christians. You notice the difference here. The Christian, the biblical anti-Messiah, have all of a sudden become the Islamist's Messiah. And the biblical Messiah has become 
The anti. The anti Messiah. Do you think that'll work? Well, I mean, the brain. Uh, well, the, the, the persuasion. <laughs> The persuasion of understanding that that's what it will, it Christ, will play, it will Christ play along. Will it will play along because as they're killing Jewish people, they say, you see, it's being fulfilled. As they get to the end, you see, and the, the anti-Messiah is coming to Jerusalem, they see, here's your Messiah, you see, and he's breaking crosses here and there, and they say, see, that's the man, until the tail end, which is, which is the defeat of the anti-Messiah who comes from the north. You know, until his defeat, it'll be a wake-up call. And the Bible talks about the destruction of the armies that comes against Israel. And like, like I said, again, each nation that is mentioned is Islamic. Each nation that is mentioned is a Muslim nation that's coming against Israel. And the warning is there because it happened. We've had how many wars? Five wars against Israel? Why did we lose every single war? Interesting. If Allah was with us, why did we lose every single war? It, it can't be we lost every single war because Amos 9.15 stated very clearly, I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled out of that land. It's impossible to pluck the Jew out of the land of Israel. So is there a conflict between whose God is the true God? Yes, there is a conflict. There is a conflict in my view. Uh, <clears throat> the God of evidence versus there's, if God is not love, he can't be God. You know, you could give him a different name, you could give him a different title, that's fine with me. But if he's not the God of love, if he doesn't say love your enemy, look at the log in your own eye before you look at the speck in your Jewish cousin. Mm -hmm. That's my God that tells me to look at the log in my eyes first. And before. if you hate your brother, who you can see, it's right. how can you You have no faith. God? If you don't have love, you have no faith. Do you recognize that you are related to your Jewish brother? Do you recognize that from scripture and yes. the lineage? How, how, do you, how, how does that sit with you? We become sort of spiritual Jews, if you will, you know, because we identify as part of Israel, as we are uh, the root, uh, Israel is the root. We are being part of this, this tree. And uh, we go celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle once a year, you know, and we simply Amazing. want to be uh, pilgrims to that land. We love that land. We don't want to take that land. That land belongs to these people. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Arafat never declared Judea as part of Palestine until after the Six Days War. If indeed, if it's an issue, of, uh, to answer your question, if it's an issue of land, why didn't Yasser Arafat and the Palestinians include Judea, part of the covenant, until 1967? Mm. It never was. It was part right. of King Hussein who occupied it. Uh -huh. Israel liberated it from King Hussein. Mm -hmm. King Hussein occupied it. He's the occupier, you see, King Hussein. Is we now the liberator? No, Israel liberated the lands. It took down the wall. Now they're crying about the wall. Israel didn't, doesn't want any walls. Israel wants peace. And I never understood that the Jewish people, and I begin to understand them now, they value life more than any people on earth. This is why I tell my Christian brothers. Because they don't go looking to kill others they on don't. purpose. I mean, they defend themselves. I mean, how do, you, how do you understand what is happening and what has happened when you see children depicted on, on the television as being as throwing stones? What's all they have, they say? That's all their weapon is against the Israeli tank. Well, they have C4 explosives. Just the other day, there was 100 uh, kilos of C4s exploding on seven Israeli soldiers. They go into buses and commit suicide. Well, they kill themselves. Why do they kill themselves? That's a good question. My aunt, Shaheed, yeah. after my cousin got killed, yeah, Shahid, uh, she passed around candy in the village. And uh, you know why she passed candy? Because it's really a selfish reason why they let their kids die. In their view, their kid will go to heaven and he will intercede for them and allow 70 members of the family to go to heaven. Of course, he's gonna pick the mom and dad first because there is no assurance of salvation in that faith. You see, the assurance of salvation is to kill yourself, to make your body as a sacrifice, literally as a shaheed, in order to go to heaven. In accordance with the Quran, when it says, Do not think that the ones who die in the cause of Allah are dead, but are living with Allah, receiving his blessing. What blessing? The virgins and all these things. That's what they have in their mind. They use sexual enticement for teenage kids. Mm. 
Mm. So to go to heaven and giving your life. There has been a life, Howard, that's been given for all mankind. Amen. You know? Jesus Christ. Yes. And it, Jesus says, whoever seeks to uh, lose his life will gain it. Whoever seeks to gain his life will lose it. But in that could be twisted. But that it, is twisted in the Palestinian mm -hmm. media where they say, lose your life so you can gain it. And they mean it literally. Lose your life as a suicide bomber. That's a shame. You but know? that's taking somebody else's life, which is forbidden. Did yeah. you notice Even a Islam distinct Even Islam forbids difference? the taking of one's life. Yeah, I've read that in the Quran, but I can't suicide. understand why they do it today. Well, you see, they I'm come with this fatwas. They come with this, uh, uh, what they call ishtihad. Ishtihad means additional jurisprudence if something is not mentioned. If it's a special situation that the so-called scholars might give an opinion about. And all these scholars came out in Palestine and elsewhere in the Middle East saying, yeah, suicide bombing is okay. So uh, it became a fatwa, it became part of the legislation in the Palestinian. But not all Muslims agree with that. You know. As a Palestinian, former Palestinian terrorist as well, yes, sir. can I ask you the, the truth about you, the use of children? Yes. I can never understand this as a father and, and one who lives in the West and we have social services that would be on our necks if we were to abuse our children in any way. And to, to place them in the firing line was that part, is that part of the propaganda and, the, and to, to gain sympathy? You see, the West thinks in this fashion. It says, since there are kids throwing stones, so there has to be a cause. You see, since there is an issue of bombing buses, there's a reason why people are angry. People kill for a reason. People are angry for a reason. And whatever reason they're explaining must be true. Well, we can ask the same question. That means if this is true, if this way of thinking is true, then Adolf Hitler was right. Because he was killing Jews, so he must have had a reason to kill Jews, so his reason is legitimate. This is why Mein Kampf is one of the best sellers in Palestine. Mm. But you see, people's opinions of Hitler might be changing today when they look at the Palestinian Israeli situation. You know, I mean, it's a bit of a dangerous world out there. Look at what's happening in France yes. and uh, Middle Europe. You know, that's now starting to become very we anti Semitic. We need to save the West. It is our job to save the West, your job, my job, and every person who lives in the West who appreciates the freedoms that we have, who appreciates the freedom of this society that opens its doors for us to come, work and live. Yes, there's sin in the West. Yes, but there's hidden sin in the Islamic world as well. Mm. You know? There's sin everywhere. There's well, sin nobody, everywhere. Nobody's perfect. But thank God that we, if we come to terms with it and we recognize yeah. it, but we also need to recognize it in our fellow men. Yeah. And that, and how, how can we ever bridge this uh, hatred for one another that is growing? I mean, it's, it's been all throughout history. People say you can never change it. And religion, yeah. they will say, yeah. is, the, is the instigator of all this, is the cause of it. Yeah. Because we get so we, we, we bridge it. it, I believe. I believe education. That's why I always say, mediocre minds are no match to professional deception. Let me say it again. Mediocre minds are no match mm. to professional deception. That's what's happening. That's what Hitler did, professional deception. That is what go is going on in 55 Islamic states by the Islamists, who's trying to rape these, rob these Islamic countries and change them to fundamentalists. They're using professional deception. Can I say then, yeah. were you professionally deceived as a Palestinian terrorist? I was both. I was professionally deceiving and being deceived at the same time. You know, it's interesting to ask that question. It's, we believed our pathological lies. You know, we made up the lies and we believed them. Myths, like we were the original Philistines. We were, Hitler says, we, the Germans were the original uh, Aryan Aliens. people. You know, Ariana was Iran and, 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 and Afghanistan. Perfect. He had nothing to do with it. And here we are thinking we're original Philistines. This is a fabricated thing. Yet, you see Yasser Arafat saying it. You see educated people like Hanan Ashrawi saying it. You see Faisal Husseini before he died saying it. See, we're not the original Philistines. How could we be the original Philistines and the Canaanites? These people were, were of a Hamitic origin. We consider ourselves Semitic Arabs. That's right. From Ishmael. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here the history is being fabricated. Mm -hmm. We need to fight fabrication. We need to speak the truth. I go to even to, the, to, the, to, the, to, mu to museums here. I go to archaeological museum and I see the, the fabrication in the archaeology world itself. Give us an example. Well, we went to the British Museum uh, in, a, in a whole section where archaeology was from Israel. They try to say the, the Habirus, the, 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 Hebrew, the, 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 the Hebrews. It talks about the Habirus being Canaanites who came and settled on the land. 
And I said, wait a minute. This is a historic <laughs> fabrication right at the heart of England. So you can't even trust the The history. Hebrews are from the lineage of Abraham, are Semitic origin, just like the Arabs, you know. And, uh, and Israel was totally, I mean, like wiped out of the whole section. No mention of Judea, no mention of, you know, it's trying to hide something. Why are we so ashamed of the Jews? Good question. Well, you're watching The Late Show, and we felt that was so important that we should be showing uh, Wally tonight. He's someone who lived in Bethlehem. He's someone who was a Muslim. He's someone who fought as a terrorist until he found Christ. All around our news at this time, Israel is just dominating, and the pressure that is upon them is enormous, and we need to learn what the truth really is all about. Well, we've got one more segment that we want to show of uh, Walid, and then we'll be coming towards the end of the program. Going back also to education in your school system, and the books that have now, uh, you know, that's quite widely known amongst uh, some people that the, that the children are being brainwashed into another way of thinking. But, you know, some of that is creeping into our school books here, apparently. Yes. You know, so uh, that Palestine, uh, and it's not Israel, they keep referring to everything but Israel. No recognition of it at all. And yet the UN was the one who even brought that about. Today the world's trying to say, why don't you ab abide by the UN rules for the, you know, what's happening in Iraq before the war and everything else? But when it comes to Israel and the UN sanctioned that, I mean... That's why all countries, the downfall of all the countries that hated Israel and hated the Jewish people is evidence. Germany Nazi party doesn't exist anymore. There's no Nazi party anymore. Germany was ransacked because of what they did to the Jewish people. Mm. That's why it says in the Bible, you can agree to disagree with the Bible. You can be an atheist, but one thing you cannot deny is that the Bible perfectly guessed everything. It perfectly guessed all these things. You have to at least give it the credit of being the perfect guesser. Mm. It says, if I bless them who bless you, I'll curse them who curse you, regarding Abraham and his seed from Isaac, you know, every single nation that uh, started cursing Israel has been uh, suffering and struggling a lot. And uh, uh, it's a warning to the world. Uh, Israel, well, we Israel has been a blessing to the West. I mean, 90% of the citrus fruit that, the, that Europe gets comes from Israel. Israel planted that land like it's never been planted before. They irrigated it, they fixed it up. And just when they fixed it up, everybody got jealous, you know. They kill, if they kill Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, the whole world is angry at Israel. Like, if we kill Osama bin Laden, nobody will shed a tear. Yet if Israel kills Osama bin Laden, it's a big major problem. Everybody's objecting. Could it be that there is anti-Semitism in the West? Of course there's anti-Semitism in the West. It's still live and well in the West. It's live and well. It's been live and well for thousands of years. Nothing changed. We're all guilty of anti-Semitism. I'm fascinated to know, really, do you think anti-Semitism, in your, your view, is in the church. Oh, heavy in the church as well, yes. Replacement theology, and now we have what is called the theology of liberation, where the Bible is liberated, not just from Israel, but from all the miraculous things, from the, from, from the beautiful things that the Bible has. Uh, <clears throat> liber I, as, as a matter of fact, I went to, to Christian school in third and fourth grade in uh, the West Bank, in Bethlehem. And what I learned there was replacement theology. I ran even into uh, Emil Salaita, who was the president of the Patriarchate Schools of Palestine. I ran into him and I said to him, excuse me, you know, I learned in your schools all these things. I came to confront you. And he says, well, you support Israel? I said, of course I support Israel. What do you think we should do with Israel? And I was interviewing him on tape. And he said, Israel should be eliminated. So I asked him, I said, by putting bombs in buses, he said, by whatever means, it should be eliminated. I said, sir, you were a lapel. How could you use such language? Mm -hmm. How could you say such things? But this must have spoken to your heart about the difference between those who follow the Bible. Yes. See, but I knew it all. I knew all mm -hmm. these things because I lived it. I was part of that culture of hate. I was part of that culture of death that taught me to kill Jews as a way of salvation. That's evil. You know, it's time to denounce it. How can we help to educate? Or how could you do it? I know you're on this program, and, but are there others like you that are having this revelation? Very few, very few. And God doesn't work by the multitudes and the many. Uh, <clears throat> we go to the universities, we speak at universities. Uh, we speak at uh, all over, church circles. I win churches 
you know, uh, I, I went to a church that had no clue about Israel, the situation, all these things. And thank, uh, thank God, now 2,000 members support Israel. In fact, they want to support a settlement. What's wrong with supporting an Israeli settlement? What's wrong with supporting the Jewish people who are living there, coming from all over the world hungry? When you go to the university particularly, because it, it's getting to the young people that is very important to change minds, it's very hard to do that uh, with the older generation, including myself in that, is that what's the best way? Uh, or, or let me ask you, where did the, what sort of questions do they ask you? I mean, they might, you know, these must be pretty picky M questions. Most of the questions they ask me, I mean, the, uh, on the radio or mostly in, 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 in a lot of the universities, they doubt is, are you really who you are? That's what I was you know? thinking a few minutes ago. And last time, two days ago, uh, one guy says, you're an Israeli. That's what you know? I, honestly, you're I was imposter. thinking the same yeah. thought. You're an imposter, you're an Israeli. Mm. I said, sir, I bet you $120,000. I'll prove my identity, that I'll collect $120,000 from you after I prove it. You'll pay me $120,000 to prove that I am who I am. Would you be willing to make the bet? He says, no. I said, then why would you accuse me of being an imposter? Why would you make such an accusation? If you're 100% sure of it, you would make that bet in an instant. Of course you would, yeah. And he didn't. You see, he knew he was lying himself. Other questions you're asked. Young people thinking, how can this be? Uh, you know, good question that you put Most to Most of you. the questions regarding uh, is, 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 the, is, is, is the lack of understanding of the history of Israel, because that's been gone. You see, all the fabrication that's been going on all the time. They are startled. Could this be true what you're saying here? Uh, a lot of the questions regarding the land, regarding the Palestinian rights, regarding the Palestinian state, establishing a Palestinian state. Uh, a lot of them are skeptic. They, they don't believe what I'm telling them. And I said, if you want to, how can we believe what you're telling us? You know, I say, okay, I have a simple proposition to you. Put a keeper on and go to the streets of Ramallah and see how long you will live. Now, you're not a Zionist, you're just a Jewish worshiper. Go put a keep on, go to uh, Shechem, and go try to pray in Joseph's tomb, and go to the Palestinian neighborhoods and see how long you will live. That will be the litmus test to show you that is not an issue that is an issue of land or Zionism or any of that sort. Because Joseph's tomb, we're talking about the Joseph's tomb, got burned, got desecrated, got, you know, all the Torah scrolls, they peed on it. I mean, it was things that are horrific. They did. They painted it green, declared it as a mosque. You see, 16 holy places in Israel got desecrated. When did Israel ever desecrate an Islamic holy place, a Christian holy place? They have total respect for all religions. And for life, as you said earlier. And for life. Mm. That's why they even allow the Muslims to worship in the Temple Mount. Can I ask you this? Because this only happened recently, and, and, and I must say, as much as I understand from history uh, about Israel and, and the situation, I cannot and could not understand that the, the woman's life was taken with her four children the other day. Um, as, you know, why women? Why women and children? You know, what, what, what's wrong with men going to fight men like we used to in the old days? I asked that question to my cousin when he stood up one time in front of the TV when he saw Adolf Hitler. And he saluted, saluted Adolf Hitler. I said, excuse me, why would you salute, salute Adolf Hitler? He killed children. He didn't kill Jewish adults only, but he killed Jewish children. And his answer astonished me. It shouldn't have astonished me because I was one of them. He says, because these children are the future soldiers of Israel, they also must die. How can you beat that sort of mindset? You can't. You can't reason with terrorism. You can only beat terrorism. You can only destroy terrorism. It's evil. How? You use the word destroy. How do you destroy by, it? By and waking yet up the West. A England needs to wake up, as America is trying to help in destroy, destroying terrorism. The West needs to, the EU needs to wake up and go full throttle, say there's no room for terrorism in the world. Go to the source of terrorism. Go to the Abu Sayyafs of the world in Philippines. Get rid of this entity. Go to the Hezbollahs and get rid of this entity. Go to Hamas and get rid of it. Go to you know, all these jihadists. you got to defang fanatic Islam from jihad. You can't let it go like that because it will destroy you. It will destroy the fabric of your nation. You have a duty for your children and your children's children. And it's on your neck. That is your duty as an Englishman for your children, as a mother, for your children. 
not to allow this brainwash to come to this country, and it will. Because if you look at every Judeo-Christian country that, that undermined its spiritual values, have lost to the Islamist. Syria was a Christian country. Even Saudi Arabia was Christian in some ways. Uh, Lebanon is a Christian country. It's gone to Hezbollah predominantly. You know, uh, Egypt was a Christian country. What happened? Turkey was a Christian country. The seven churches were in Turkey. Every single country that lost its heritage have lost to one group, and that's the Islamist. So what's going to happen to Britain? All right, before you answer that, think about it. Do you think that America then has been so great, and whereas England and Great Britain was so great, is because we have acquiesced and given up on our support outwardly for Israel? Yes. That was we a have. short answer. It's a short answer. We have given up, Britain have given up Israel. And here's a good example. The United States blesses Israel. The United States is blessed. Blessed with everything. They got the jobs, they got the... You know, the economy, the economy, the they got the beautiful. Even though they don't think it. Yes. I'm afraid to walk in the streets of England, you know. So am I. Yes. When we're we moving. You know. No, it's all right. You actually live somewhere else. But <laughs> yeah, I we have to live States. here. Yeah. You know, how does it feel? How does it feel to live, you know, uh, in a country that you are afraid to speak? You're afraid to walk the streets. You're afraid to express your opinions. This is not the England of the Balfour. You know, Balfour and, and, and Chaim Weizmann, they created the state of Israel. Balfour was a Christian Zionist, and Chaim Weizmann was a Jew. They got together, and God used them to create a state of Israel. Reminds me of Leon Uris's Exodus. There was a, a group of um, Arabs that were living there in, in the north. I uh, can't remember the, the, the town, but they were so helpful to Israel. Recognized that these people were coming back. They were traveling from Russia walking over all the, the, the mountains and everything to get there, got there and were helped by their, their Arab brothers. I call them Arab brothers. Yes, yes. But they had such a hard time with the rest of the Arab nations and were even, even losing their lives for, for allowing Israel to really, or the, the Jews to return at that yes, time. Yes. Was it, is, it, is that a true picture of what was happening then from a, a family's point of view or history? Uh, I lost the point. Leon Uris's picture of the way that the, the Jews are returning, you know, before, obviously, 1948. Yes. Um, and their trail uh, of hardship getting back and coming over into that particular, the northern part of, it, uh, of Israel, they were helped by the Arabs. Yes. And a certain Arab group, I can't remember the name of them. Yes, you have the Druze who stand, yes. who stand with Israel. The Druze have yes. been great friends of Israel. As a matter of fact, my grandfather was yeah. friends with Israel. Many Arabs were friends with Israel. Many Arabs didn't hate the Jewish people coming to that land. It's, the, it's, the, few, yes. it's it, the few landowners who got jealous because they had what they called, was, was called the peasants, the fallahin. And these people were given loans, never to be able to pay these loans. You see, then they, they saw that there's no ability for them to pay their loans. Israel and the Jewish settlements were providing medical care, real salaries. So they moved over there, started working for the Israeli, for the Jewish settlements, and they got jealous. So they started this, this hatred and this war and this battle. But many Arabs had no problem with the Jewish people. Did you know my father was saved by a Jewish doctor? Uh, my cousin, who's a Hamas activist, he, taught, he teaches Islamic theology in Jerusalem. He was saved. He was drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, saved by a Jew. While two of his classmates died while they're trying to save him. Muslims tried to save him. They both died. He was saved by a Jew, you see. And, 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 the and the press doesn't print this sort of stuff. That, that's though, right. And I yeah. asked my father, I said, Father, have you prayed for your Jewish doctor who saved your life? He says, I can't pray for him. I have to curse him. Can you imagine? Mm. So why do you think, really, that we as Christian believers should support Israel right now, giving your background? Israel is a democracy. It's a democracy. It's a beacon of light in the Middle East, a beacon for democracy, mm. a beacon for freedom, a beacon for prosperity. It's became such a wonderful industrial country, planted the land, you know. We could learn from Israel, and our Arab friends could learn from Israel. Sometimes we have to apply tough love, as we do, you know, we have to apply tough love, say, no, you're wrong, you know, and, and uh, we need to support Israel because it's, it's it really, it's came to be as a light to the nations. And indeed it is. But we are blinded to this because we only see what is being told to us. You know, 
I have spent years researching Jewish songs. Can you imagine such a thing? <laughs> researching Jewish songs. Because all my life I learned the Palestinian songs, the Palestinian revolutionary songs that taught to hate, kill, and blow up, you know. I come in the name of death. This is a song we sang. I come in the name of death. Your blood is kosher to us. That was another song. Damkum halali alayna. I searched the songs, the Jewish songs. I couldn't find one single song that had the words kill, war. I finally found one song that had the word war in it. So I went running to my Jewish friend. He said, excuse me. What's this? There is a song that has war. I said, sorry to bust your bubble. The song says, and man will not learn war any longer right. from Isaiah. Yes. That's just shocking. Yes. This is shocking. Here's a people that everything about them is about life, the value of life. That's why Golda Meir says, we can forgive the Arabs for killing our children. We can't forgive them for making us kill their children. Wow, powerful you know? statement. That's this people. Is this the people yeah. that is so evil? If Zionism was so evil, that's why I pray every day. May God bless me with it and may I never recover. Well, you're an unbelievable character. I mean, I have to, I, I, I want to do what that student asked you and say, are you for real? That was as if it was written or yeah. uh, and the interview was conducted today. Well, it's exactly what, what's happening in the, in the world today. Um, it's exactly what Hamas are, are doing today with their charter, which is the obliteration of, of the state of, of Israel. And I believe that we at Revelation TV have a responsibility to, to teach the truth and to share the scriptures, and that's what we're trying to do. And, and so one of the things that I've just done is, is finished a book. I've simply called it Israel, Gaza and Hamas, uh, What You Need to to know and I've tried to look at what's happening I, I've looked at the whole situation with Hamas I didn't really understand the, the history of Hamas going back 1928 the Muslim Brotherhood um, but the way that they began as a social activity uh, just by a local teacher but he was absorbed by the teachings um, of, of a gentleman who was anti-Israel and so in their charter they put in anti-Israel it's even suggested that uh, Muslim Brotherhood as it was then was uh, funded by, by the Nazi Germany and uh, they began in Egypt where they were based to oppress um, the, the Jews and then 1988 they moved to Gaza and uh, changed their name to Hamas they produced their charter their charter was simply you know you could be totally based on the Sharia law nothing but the Sharia law is what counts and and everything uh, must be done and that means the obliteration of the Jewish people okay that's the what I wanted you to point out to our viewers is the fact is it doesn't matter there's never going to be a two-state solution I mean they would never be happy with it and let alone Israel being happy with it so they want the total annihilation That's of right. the Jewish people, not just Israel, but the Jewish people worldwide. I saw a quote, Howard, which I, I thought was very appropriate. It said, if Hamas uh, lay down their arms, there would be peace. If the Jews laid down their arms, they would be obliterated, be no more Israel. Yeah. Incredible, isn't it? Um, I'm just going to say again that, um, you know, those nations that seem to be lining up today, uh, I mean, you were talking about the United Kingdom, there's uh, a yeah. group of lawyers that are, and legal minds that have got together. Uh, you know a little bit about that? Do you want to explain well, well, that to our viewers? Uh, today there's been uh, a letter, an open letter, which has been sent to the government, which is saying that uh, we might be guilty as a British government for supplying arms to Israel because Israel uh, was found guilty of, of genocide at the International Court of Criminal. But that's uh, not true, is it? It's, but it's not true. Mm. No. They haven't been found guilty. They've been accused. It was just suggested that they might be. Mm. And, and this is, I, I finished the book and then I actually added in a chapter on the BBC because I felt it was so important to, to do it. And, and if we've got time, let me just give you one example. Everyone heard about... Um, the aid trucks who were going in and the rush that there was for, for people to, to get to them and maybe 100 people killed. And the BBC put it out as fact. In fact, if you look at the BBC now, they have a thing called Verify. And that means that they've taken the evidence, they've examined it, they've looked at the videos, they've set it all into place and, and they're sure that it's right.
Well, that particular incident, somebody who, who is a researcher on anti-Semitism looked at it. His name is uh, uh, John, David Collier. And he researched it. He found that that story of 100 people killed uh, at the, when they chased the lorry was based on one person, one eyewitness only. And he did uh, research on that person. He found that this particular journalist, who was the eyewitness, worked for outlets connected to Hamas and the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard. He even found that he'd liked some interesting posts, including in 23, one occasion where uh, seven Israelis died in a terrorist attack at a synagogue, and he'd even posted a picture of himself with one of the Hamas leaders. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we're trying to say is you hear things, it's not necessarily true. Yeah. And what I've tried to put in the book is the, the story of what happened on October, why it happened, um, who are the UN and the UNHUR. We've got some pictures in the book. That's one of the soldiers looking at a body of a Hamas terrorist. That's a picture of just the wreckage of what they did. It's horrendous. And, and that bottom picture, I found the most powerful picture, uh, the Magdan David Adad, which is the ambulance service in Israel. It's a picture of one of the doctor's uh, medical bags covered with blood. Mm. It isn't all that you hear on the news media and here at Revelation we're trying to redress the balance. Yeah. We well, can actually see the build-up right now that uh, hearts and minds have been changed um, to awards uh, the Palestinians in favour of uh, against Israel and even the rhetoric that's coming out of the United Kingdom and also the America um, doesn't bode well for the future state of Israel and the Jewish people uh, on a worldwide basis as well. But what I do want to say and remind people is that scripture is very clear in Zechariah's uh, chapters uh, 10 through 14 or 12 through 14 I should say that those who come against Israel at the end and the nations will come against the nations plural all the nations in fact will come against Israel and it says that they will be pulverized they will come to naught because God steps in on behalf of Israel and it is when the Messiah comes back have a look at that for yourself and let me just say to you you know read the scriptures just as Wally Chubat did he had a revelation after revelation after revelation and that's why I believe that God gave the name to me for this channel to be Revelation TV. Thank you for joining us.